here we go with another game guide and today we are looking at the game that i played to get rank 1 eu basically i was like uh, 30 points away from rank 1 when i threw this game so here are the choices and if we look at the tribe we are missing max quillboards and beast which means that it's basically almost impossible to play on tier 4 because you don't have shaker you don't have max so the only thing you can really do on tier 4 is majordomo and there are no beasts so tripling into 5 is a bit worse at the same time though murlocs are pretty insane because there are no death rattles or beasts to counter them so i guess i just want to play murlocs this game and uh, with that in mind we look at the heroes. Keltas is obviously unplayable in this lobby, especially. So then it's between Panda, Galakrond, and Lichbaz. And I'm not a big fan of Gala in this lobby because Quillbors are out. And I don't like Avenge in this lobby. And also, I don't like going for YOLO 6 drops with Galakrond. So I decided to skip him here. So at that point, it's between Lichbaz and Panda. And Panda is basically just a better version of Lich Buzz. Uh, even though Lich Buzz has a body, which is better than Panda's body, but uh, it's a Murloc lobby, so the Lich Buzz body doesn't matter as much. So I just go Am for I the Panda here. When I'm off stream. To mute this. So yeah, turn one. We have an option between Graveyard Shift and Embrace the Elements. With Embrace the Elements, I can win first fight. But with Graveyard Shift, you just get one gold for free. So I'm gonna buy the Elemental because the other two minions in the shop are not that great. But uh, I end up going for Graveyard Shift anyway because having money is always nice. And I might just tie the fight anyway. Like Lord Barov doesn't have a hero power or anything like that. So yeah. And in fact I tie the fight or won. I don't remember. Now turn two. I get the hooked as hero power. So I was planning to level this turn. But since I got the hooked as hero power with a swabby in the shop. I decided to stay. And that might have been a bait. Maybe I should have leveled anyway and ignored the hero power. But like... Um, tier 2 is not that strong because no quillboards, no mech and no uh, beast. So a lot of powerful 2 drops are not available. And uh, usually with panda you want to try to utilize your hero powers every turn. And also if I stay on 1 I can hit some triples. Worst case scenario, I can always level next turn because I get one gold for free from the Swabby. So I decided to stay here. So I take the Swabby. And my opponent is Lich King, which is also another reason why I wanted to stay. Because if I stay, I can win against Lich King. If I level, I'm going to lose for sure. Because he has a hero power and I don't. So my rolls are not the greatest. I'm not a fan of uh, Scaliwag Pair, so I'm gonna pass it here. And yeah, I'm gonna take an extra gold. I could have also went for the Swabby. I discovered the Swabby here. I could have picked the Swabby and then next turn buy the other Swabby, level for zero gold, and then coin buy a Scaliwag. And that might have been the line, honestly. But uh, in that moment, I really didn't want to buy the Scaliwag pair because I'm never gonna triple into a 6 with Panda. Like it's, I, it just doesn't work out. And uh, I don't know, I just don't like Scaliwag when I can't triple into 6. Also, like if I triple into a 5, it's awkward because there are no beasts. So I decided to leave the shop open, try to get... Uh, some better cards and more power rather than pairs. But the Swabby line might have been better. So here we win the fight because we stayed behind.
And here we go. Another graveyard shift. And at this point, I wasn't happy with my hero powers because I would like to hit a tempo hero power like Panda, Edwin, or um, Daryl. I mean, not Panda, Mukla. And instead, I'm just hitting like random economy. And at this point, I just have too much economy. I want strength. But the Dream Portal is useless, so I will pick Graveyard Shift again. So it feels like I'm playing Lich Bass at this point. I'm just getting the Lich Bass zero power every turn. And here I'm buying the Chromal Wing. And I want to level up. But at the same time, I'm thinking that I really want to get my body in time. And since Tess is on tier 2, uh, I want to try to win the fight. So, once again, I probably should have leveled here. But uh, in the end, I decided to stay. And I think I bought the Trickster to try and win the fight. And maybe high roll a triple next turn. So, yeah. Just take the trickster and then I move this since I didn't level, it's not a 2 3, so I put it back. But turns out that Tess just uh, got a tad into a Murloc shop, so I just get wrecked. And I get very little meter because she was super strong with the war leader. I'm really not happy about this turn. Now I'm worried because I don't think I'm going to get my body in time. Uh, once again, we get, keep getting economy and not tempo from the hero power. And here my shop is awkward because I got a triple, which is nice. But then there is a whelp. And whelp is the worst minion in the game. So I really don't want to buy it. Here I have two lines. I can either double buy coin hero power stay on tier 1 or I can level buy hero power so if I buy the whelp I'm basically wasting a gold because next turn I will still have to pay full price to level up so this whelp is effectively minus 1 gold to have a whelp so in the end, I decided to pass it because that one gold might come up next turn um, to help me squeeze in a hero power or something like that. So I'm gonna end up buying the, the pair and leveling because first of all, I'm buffing my Chroma Wing, which is basically just as strong as buying a Whelp. And also I'm saving one gold. And on top of that, I'm against Lich King, so I don't think that Whelp is going to win me the fight by any means. Like, which Lich King at this stage of the game is just too strong with, with zero power. So yeah, I go for this line and level up and float one gold. I'm not that happy about it, but it is what it is. I could have also sold the Elemental and used the coin to hold the triple. But I still want to try to get body meter, although I don't get my body. That's really sad. Like staying on tier 1 and not getting your body in time is like the worst feeling ever. So now I face the Ticatus, which levels to 4 and triples into a 5. So I know that uh, I can't grid my triple. I have to go for a 4 because... Otherwise, I'm going to take uh, at least 9 damage, because it's going to have a 5 drop. So, I picked the Volgin Hero Power instead of Jaraxxus, because this is just better and costs 0 gold, since I only have 1 demon. And here I have 2 line. I can either buy the Mag, sell the Elemental, back my board, and then level up, use the Volgin Hero Power and buy the Anomaly. Or I can skip the mag and just take a 4 drop. And that's what I'm going for. I'm gonna buff the anomaly so it has a lot of attack, not only health. And I get a domo, which I will play. I'm thinking about freezing this, but it's not worth it, so I don't do it. 
So thanks to the Domo, I get to win the fight, especially because my opponent tripled into an Omi. But um, I wasn't super happy about this Domo. I would have rather tripled into either a Witch or a Ring Matron. So since I didn't Frost last turn, now I get a Divine Shield that I can buff with my Domo. And now the Domo gets a bit better. So I'm against a tier 3 Barov with a triple. So I buy this normally because, or whatever it's called, because it's um, an elemental that might give me a Crackling Cyclone, which would be a better buff target than the Bronze. But uh, it gives me something useless. I also sold the elemental before playing it, so I had a chance to get a elemental as well. That didn't happen. So here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hero power my chromal wing because then I can level and the buff becomes permanent. So I like that interaction since the chromal wing is doubling half the attack so half the attack is gonna be permanent. So this chromal wing should be like an 8-4 next turn something like that. And then I take the bronze because I wanna buff a divine shield. So since we tripled into the Domo, we won last fight and we're also going to win this fight. So the triple into a 4 gave us some time to breathe because we were losing every single fight up until that point. And obviously I wasn't happy about tripling into a 4 but it had to be done. And now I get offered the Scab Zero Power and for those of you who don't know Basically, how the Scab Zero Power works, if you are Panda or if you are Finley, is that uh, it's gonna steal from your opponent's board in real time. It's gonna check the opponent's board the moment you pick the Hero Power. So here I'm waiting to see what my opponent does, and he actually levels and triples. So I'm gonna wait and try to steal his triple. So there is a bit of waiting here, and now I'm gonna go for the hero power. And rip. These are his triple, by the way. He's gonna have a golden molten and a golden weaver on the board, but I whiff on his five drop. I just get a Arthus instead. And I was pretty upset about it. I'm thinking about the bronze warden pair because it has nice synergy with the Arthus, but I'm on tier four, it's just not good enough, so I skip it. Here I obviously take the Gambler, because it's free. I'm thinking about this Cleave, but it's just not worth it. And then I roll into Matron plus Green Thumb. I decided to go for that, since I have some Reborns and stuff. I end up selling the Chromal Wing, which I buffed last turn, but it is what it is. And this witch should have been before the Arthus, but I didn't have time to make the proper position. Although luckily he snipes my imp anyway, so it doesn't matter. And I get my Arthus value as well. But this Lich King has a Golden Trickster Reborn combo, which is actually quite cool, and it's way too strong, I can't uh, deal with it. So I'm gonna lose this fight. Keep in mind there is another Lich King in the lobby, which is the Finley. They're both playing Lich King. We take the fat L here. And this is when you start to be scary. Because if you look at this, my hero powers are not the greatest. My board is completely random and I'm losing fights. This is when you start to enter panic mode. Like, how do we save this game? I have no direction whatsoever other than having a domo on my board and I have some junk scaling with some junk synergies. So, yeah, we need to get creative here and uh, try to do something. 
So I see that I have a pair, which is nice. I might triple into an out. And yeah, out of this, I think yeah, I picked the that one. Maligos is playing Murlocs, by the way. So I'm I'm okay with having this death rattle because they might help me survive. And I'm considering the crackling, but in the end I skip it because I'm already buffing a bronze. I, I don't need to buy another divine shield because I don't have a way to scale it other than rolling a smogger, but I can buff this with a smogger. Get a elemental, which is nice. And now I get the recycler. So I sell out of my strong minions to go for recycler. But the problem is that since we faced uh, Lich King, this turn was way too, too short. So I don't really have time to use my money and get stronger. So I kind of got weaker here in a way. Although I'm getting some buffs on the shield. So. This guy just has a random vanilla poison board with a zap. So, yeah, my thoughts are looking good. And we actually managed to get a value trade in there. So, yeah, he didn't have much going for him. So, we actually end up winning the fight, which I was really surprised about since I got weaker. And I hold, I held like so much gold on my board and in my hand. But you know, a win is a win. We take it. And now we finally get a good hero power. We get the Alex Straza. So we can try to do something. I pick it not, man, not just to go dragons, but also because it allows me to go to five. So I can maybe find a session and start pivoting into poison. And maybe save the game that way. So yeah, I pick it up, level up, get the Murazon, and get nothing here. Just pick a Draconid. And I get another triple. So take my triple. So here the choice is between Eliza and Kali. Nadina is just not strong enough with the dragons that I have. So um, in the end, I decide to go for the Kali because I have a lot of gold and dragons and battle cries. And also my best minion is a dragon, so it makes sense to, to scale dragons. Also, next turn I'm going to get my golden body so I can get another Kaligos. So yeah, here I go for the Kali. Get uh, a good dragon with the bronze. I'm going to take it. Also a pair. I can triple later on. And I start pivoting into dragons because my board was so bad that I didn't mind selling it and pivoting. Okay, so here there is the big blunder. I go for this line because I wanted to be gold efficient and get the elemental in there, but then. The rope comes out, I'm busy checking my positioning, and I actually end up not buying uh, the Selemental, so I floated two gold, pretty much. It was a big mistake. And they just wrecked me with the trade. So after that pawn hit, I'm guaranteed to take 15 in this fight, pretty much. Like without that hit, I probably would have taken like 11 or 12 damage, but that hit is just way, way too bad. Well, yeah, I mean, we just pivoted into dragons and this Zephyrus has a lot of tempo, so it makes sense. And here we get the ghost, which is nice. So... Here we can pick the fish to get more battle cries, or we can pick the George. It doesn't really make much sense to go fragment because I'm against the ghost, so it doesn't make sense to pick a tempo hero power. 
And I'm gonna end up picking the Jord because I have the Enforcer on my board. Or I can just find a Spore and punch shield that. So I'm gonna check out the first triple. It's an Adina. So now this Hero Power loses a bit of value already. And then the second triple, it's a second Kali. So, yes. Two turns ago, our board was nothing. And now we have a game going. And I roll into the Spore. Um, this was already looking much better than expected. So here my question is, do I buy a Spore and Nero power it? Or do I take a Mac? And obviously the Spore is the better value play. But uh, this guy got an early Nomi, so I'm afraid that... Um, if I don't get enough stats, I might die. Also, if I go for the Spore and, Euro and George Hero Power play, I float gold. And floating gold when you're playing Caligos is really not what you want to do. So, since I'm too afraid of losing to the Ghost with the Spore and without the stats, I just uh, end up going for this line. And here is where you can see that the... Um, not buying the Selemental last turn was huge. Because if I would have had the two extra gold, I could have bought the Spore and shield it and played an Adina. And I would have been very happy about that. But uh, since I didn't have time to buy it, now here we are. Although, it kind of sucks, but it is what it is. And now this guy is super weak. Like he got a Nomi like turn five, something like that. And he's ultra weak. So I'm actually pretty upset that I didn't bought the, the spore. But like uh, I can't afford to get a seventh place from the ghost. Like it's just, uh, it doesn't work. That's my MMR. You can't be at the bottom. So I had to go for the safe line. And now we're against the 40 HP test. So there is no way I can pick the cat hero power because she's gonna murder me. She's playing elementals and she faced Ticatus, so I know that she's gonna have a good board. So here I'm between uh, the alteration and the frost wolves. And I end up going for the fourth wolf because it's guaranteed value. Alteration might not give me anything. So at this point we are just playing Caligos. Cycling battle cries and try not to die, pretty much. I don't play the Eliza here once again because, uh, as I said, when you're playing Caligos, you really, really want to be gold efficient so you can make sure that you buy as many battle cries as possible every turn. So, um, and also, like, uh, I would have to put Eliza second, it might get sniped by a Wind Fury or a Cleave, it doesn't really make much sense to, to run it. So here we are, they have a golden Nomi and they are bigger than us, but we have the shields on our side. So yeah, we actually end up surviving here, even though I'm pretty sure I was unfavorite. But it worked out, so we are still alive. And Zephyrus died, but we can't get the ghost. Now we face Murlocs. From Barrow on tier 6. I'm really afraid of Amalgadons. And so out of these hero powers, there's the Zephyrus, there's the Hook Tusk, which are interesting. And I was also thinking about twice as nice. Because there are some battle cries on tier 5 that I could duplicate. Like Murazon and Tavern Tempest would be really nice. But um I don't wanna pick the Zephyrus because I'm against Murlocs, so I don't wanna spend 3 gold to triple a Caligos and lose a Divine Shield, it just doesn't make sense. So in the end, it's between Twice as Nice or uh, Trash for Treasure, and I end up going for Trash of Treasure, because I'm not a believer in the Twice as Nice.
But here it might have doubled the Bagurgol, but like it's such a low chance. There are so many five drops in the shop. So I sold my minions because I want to start buffing the restore. So you can see that, for example, if I had a spore here, I couldn't buff the presto, right? Because I, that would be boardlock. Although here you can see I would have actually doubled the, the elemental, which would have been nice. And the hook task hero power actually doesn't even give me a battle cry. So in the end, uh, twice as nice might have worked out better. So we cycle a few battle cries and call it a day. And once again, if I if I had the divine shield spore on my board, I basically would have just cycled the battle cries and then end on a 13-15. And my board would have been way stronger. So that's these are the kind of things you have to think about when you are uh, analyzing your games in retrospect. You always have to picture the other case scenario whenever you can. So, yeah, here we go up against the bear of, and I don't know if I should have swapped this too, but uh, I decided to go for Nadina because these Murlocs maybe doesn't have press store, then Nadina can protect from poisons. And he's actually really weak, just has two units pretty much, and then a bunch of small poisons that I can just steal for free. But, He's getting really good trades. Yep, he keeps on getting good trades. And so he actually managed to survive, man. Like this guy got so incredibly lucky to survive this fight. It's actually unbelievable. But he does. So um, here we are. Top 4 instead of top 3. I wasn't happy at all about it. So we don't have our buddy anymore. Now we only have 2 hero powers. So we just picked the, the Vandar one. Or whatever it's called. Because I'm not leveling. So I don't need the map. And here it's... This Argus is huge. I'm really... Really happy to see that. And once again, classic dragon gameplay, we just cycle our battle cries, call it a day, go into battle. This guy's just playing poison scam. This is the guy that lost when we were super weak, and he just had a couple of defins and nothing else on the board. So yeah, he basically just played, he just hard forced defin comp since the beginning, and he actually managed to get top 4 with it. But Prestor is just too strong against Poison Scam, so we just wrecked him. And Barov survives again! And later on, Belial, which is the guy on the test, which is another Italian player, told me that uh, the Barov scammed him as well. So this guy should have been 4 or 5 place instead he's getting top three because he's coming fights over and over again and i don't know if you guys know that but at my rank i lose points for solo third so i need to be in top two to win points so right now i'm really fucking pissed because i know i'm not getting points i'm not getting to rank one in this game unless if i survive this fight and tess said a golden nomi like 10 years ago so is gonna be insanely strong here. Once again, we cycle the battle cries and then we prage and get into battle. And she's insane. She, she's on tier 4, but she has Amalgadons because she's Tess. She even as a Sephin. And I get some really good hits in this fight. But she's so strong. Like, look at this. These hits are insane for me. Getting all the perfect hits pretty much. Look at this, it's just crazy. Like every hit is like perfect, but even then, like she's just way, way too strong. 
so I die anyway. But the Maligos was playing Golden Selfless Baron, and the Baron just this is the Baron's board. It just has a bunch of naked poisons. So I'm hoping that the bear of dies to the Mali. So I get 2.5 and I can gain some points. And guess what? The Pepega bear of finally dies to the ghost. So it's actually a 2.5. So I gain 16 points. But uh, it's not enough to get rank 1. So I had to queue another game after this one. And look at this. We got the rank 1 anyway, in the end. So yeah, rank 1 with 15.532 uh, MMR. And here's, here are my stats from 14.470 MMR up until that MMR. It's 56 games with an average of 2.6. So I... As I'm telling you guys, like you need to get top two if you wanna climb. And as you can see, like zero top eights, zero top fives, one seventh, and then mainly top four and some fifth places. So yeah. It's actually brutal if you wanna go for rank one. Take notes and this is what you gotta do. So yeah. I hope you guys liked this game. Like it was a really insane game. Like if you watched the back at the beginning of the video, like you will never believe this is a second place game, right? This is like a top eight game, easy clap, bottom right concede. But uh, somehow we managed to save it. So hope you guys enjoyed this uh, game review and see you all in the next one. Bye bye.